Science is built on being elitist and not allowing people to access it, which is super fucked up, you know? This is Josiah Zayner. He captured the world's attention after using the DNA editing tool CRISPR, one of the most significant scientific advances ever, on himself. This technology is so powerful. There are literally millions of people dying that could use this technology, and yet nobody is giving these people access. This is a syringe. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use this technology. His do-it-yourself attitude towards CRISPR sent the media and science world into a tailspin. He's even had a medical board investigation aimed at him, but he's not deterred by the controversy. He says this is such a powerful tool for good that everyone should have access to it. So that's exactly what he's doing. He's selling DIY CRISPR kits that anyone can buy. Why is science so fucking complicated? People having access to this technology allows them to do crazy and cool shit. Josiah has a bold vision for the future of CRISPR. Some say his cavalier attitude is dangerous. He thinks maybe they're right, but sometimes risk is necessary to push the field further and faster. CRISPR is so funny because it's got this stupid acronym that doesn't even make any sense and I always forget it half the time and I'm just like, fuck. It stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. The name's a mouthful, but what it does is pretty remarkable. It allows you to edit genomes by cutting DNA strands at precise points, then remove or replace a sequence to correct mutations in that DNA. I went to graduate school and did a PhD. After that, I got a job at NASA engineering organisms for like space travel and, and shit. And uh, I saw that there was an extreme lack of people working on this technology and wanted to change that. So he quit his job with NASA and started experimenting in his garage. It all sounds a little sketchy, but Josiah is a trained scientist with a PhD from the University of Chicago in molecular biophysics. But soon he went from garage scientist to viral biohacker when he injected himself with DNA that had been modified using CRISPR. And I think that's the way it should be with genetic engineering and synthetic biology. Why can't people use this technology without necessarily completely knowing how it works? This video sparked outrage. Oh, I, I can answer that one for you because it could be dangerous and someone could get hurt. Also, I- Scientists freaked out. They were concerned the more this was normalized, people changing their DNA could have some unintended consequences, like modifying their genetic code that could be passed down from generation to generation. I wanted to do it to make a statement for the right reasons. And that's so hard to do, and I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I was just like me trying to make a statement about how like our whole medical and genetic engineering system is fucked up. I wanted people to realize that this technology is real and powerful and it's available to them. We can't only put it in the hands of the rich and the powerful and the elite, right? I think that's the scarier thing. That's the bigger recipe for disaster. I don't know what the future is going to bring with this technology, but like giving people access to something that's that powerful, like I can't imagine that amazing stuff won't happen. Yeah. Also, maybe some bad stuff too. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, you know, like, bad stuff happens with anything, right? But it's like, what are we willing to, you know, sacrifice here? And in the end, this is where the discussion really lies. The traditional science community is methodical and careful. Josiah and biohackers of the same ethos prioritize moving quickly and accepting more risk. They think that risk is worth it for the potential upside. I understand the frustration with science being slow, but it, it really does take time to do it right and to do it safely and to make sure that we're not going to harm people. This is Megan Hochstrasser from the Innovative Genomics Institute. I think the risk of people trying to do experiments on themselves or people trying to recommend that others do that is that I think it gives people a false hope. There's all kinds of things that could go wrong with self-experimentation. So I don't like the idea of normalizing that kind of thing. This is where we sometimes lose the nuance in this discussion. 
While they differ in opinion about the virtues of self-experimentation, both Josiah and Megan agree that what Josiah's company, The Odin, sells to the public now, mostly DIY CRISPR kits for smaller scale biology experiments, is a valuable exercise in citizen science. Josiah did inject himself with CRISPR, but that's not what he's selling or even suggesting that people do. I know people that work in community labs who do this sort of DIY biology stuff. And I think that can be really beneficial and powerful to have communities of people having the option to try to do experiments and learn about science and get hands-on experience. We sell this one kit that basically you can go through, learn how to do a CRISPR experiment in uh, microorganisms. And then our other class that I'm super pumped on is our class on teach people how to grow and engineer human cells. Zayner's goal is to increase understanding of the underlying technology, to drive broader access in settings where it could really help people. It's so imperative and important that people have access to this technology. Like, can literally rewrite the genetic code of the human beings. Like, in the whole history of humanity, no human has had their genetic code rewritten up, up until maybe last year when uh, scientists in China edited some embryos. And that last part is what Megan is more worried about. She believes the danger is less in people like Josiah tinkering in their homes, and more about misuse in the traditional lab space. In 2018, a Chinese scientist created the world's first genetically edited babies. No gene was changed except the one to prevent HIV infection. The girls are safe, healthy as any other babies. Dr. He said he used CRISPR to alter the genes with the goal of making the babies resistant to HIV. This is illegal in the US and other countries to alter the genes of a human embryo. But in China, it's not. However, it still sparked outrage from several Chinese scientists about the future ramifications. These thorny ethical questions are not lost on Josiah. I get it. I'm not saying there shouldn't be regulation or anything like that. It's like roads, right? You have stop signs and stoplights. Guardrails, right? Like, I think you can put in these stoplights and stop signs and guardrails for biotechnology so that people can use the technology and you just prevent, like, the extremely stupid stuff from happening, right? But his experiments haven't just been given a side eye from the ivory tower. Josiah was actually investigated last year by the Medical Board of California for practicing medicine without a license. He was ultimately cleared of that charge. What happens next is up in the air. The hopeful part of this, however, is that while the approaches of those who care about this space are different, the goal is the same. It's a difficult position to be in because you have a powerful technology and you want people to have access to it. What do you do? I don't think in any circumstance, though, the answer is don't give people the knowledge, don't give people the technology, right? We have to make sure that you're pushing things in the right direction and that everyone's going to be able to benefit equitably and it won't be a select few and it'll really be an accessible benefit. There's this saying that I have, be your own hope. You always imagine that like, doctors will be there for you, scientists will be there for you, somebody will be there for you, but a lot of times it's just not the case. But even if you don't have money, even if you don't have a fancy degree, I think it's possible that people can find ways to help themselves, be the hope for themselves that nobody else could. Thanks for watching our series about biohackers. For more stories like this one, go to our website and subscribe to Freethink.